know why but uh, right after this break um, I'll introduce to you that university lecturer who has got many talking for years now stay with us My guest today is a political science lecturer at the University of Ghana. He's also the head of Youth Bridge Institute right here in Ghana. Professor Ransford Jampo is here on 21 Minutes with KKB. Prof, good morning. Morning. <laughs> Hope all is well. By the grace of God. They, they say you've been in oblivion for a while, but uh, some way, somehow, you are, you are out of the wilderness. <laughs> is that the case? <laughs> I've never been in oblivion. I mean, those who said I've been in oblivion, maybe they are not paying attention. Uh, every Ghanaian who is politically switched on knows that I, I cannot be silenced. Uh, I, I have never been mm. in oblivion. I've been saying my mind, I mean, right from the word go. The 2020 has been a very difficult year for a lot of people the world over. But uh, particularly for you, it's been a much more traumatic one, I suppose. Between 2019 and 2020, you've had to endure a lot and go through a lot. Um, how has the journey been? How has it been? I mean, and taking yourself out of all of these entanglements here and there, accusations here and there, and all. <laughs> I'm a man. These things are meant to come so that they toughen you. They are meant to come so you can also... Um, draw closer to your maker. They are meant to come so they test your resilience and all that. And mm. so I know what you are talking about. I mean, the people's orchestrations just for a certain ag agenda. And um, I was a main target, but it is fine. I think we have been able to put matters behind us. Um, I have been reinstated by my university. I've started working and um, I do not intend to dignify what was done against me. I'm forgiving. People have actually come to me to apologize. Mm. I, I, can, I don't want to mention names, but um, those who were really behind it, they've, they've, they've reached out to me. And I'm a Christian. I do not want to give the discussion of... So it was a deliberate attempt to, to do what to you? To destroy your reputation? To sabotage you? Well, to, maybe, to, to maybe, to maybe um, you may have to... I can tell you off, off camera, but mm. the point is I do not want to dignify what was done against me. By the grace of God, um, I wasn't silenced. By the grace of God, I didn't die. So the, then the, the grace, agenda was to silence you? Well, maybe um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. But I mean, from all indications, um, some people would have laughed that well. Um, don't talk again and all that. Mm -hmm. But you see, my wife tells me I, I, I talk even when I sleep, mm -hmm. and so not until I die, I will not stop talking. <laughs> 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 That's interesting, but I mean, I can, I can, I can imagine, um, particularly for your working relationship with a lot of these international uh, partners. Uh, sometimes it's a pretty big deal. They they consider these things very, very seriously. I, I remember the Me Too movement and all of the things that happened elsewhere, and its impact on some actors, some, uh, uh, you know. So, for you in in this sphere and with the kind of work you do, how did this impact on on your professional life? Well. Um I mean, to show courtesy and respect to them, I mean, something has been said about you, you have to um, be investigated and you have to go through a certain process mm -hmm. um, to be sure whether you are guilty or you're not guilty. And so I had to reach out to them to tell them that, look, I want to file this. And so let's put all relationships on hold and let's clear um, matters before. There were some who insisted that, that no, continue. But then I managed to convince them that let us get things over and done with. Afterwards, we can continue. So, I mean, some listened, some were disappointed and all that. And so I, I think um, it's a matter of um, principle. I felt that I had to go through a certain process. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get the real focus to go through it, I needed to put everything on hold. And so I, I, I did that. And um, by the grace of God, I went through it and then we are out. I don't know how um, those behind it felt, but the point is I, I knew I had not done it and I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to um, be so much affected. Of course, our family mm -hmm. and you have people who admire you, you have people who look up to you. I have my parents, you know, who are alive and they would be affected. And so the fact that it affected other people affected me, mm. but not the... Uh, so, the, so for instance, let's, let's look at your wife. When news broke, what was her first question to you? What, what, what did she ask you? Uh, she said she knew I wouldn't do that, and that it was um, God's 
own doing of drawing me much closer to mm. himself. So your wife never doubted you? No, no, no. She said uh, that God wants you to get closer to him. And yes, I was a Christian. I, mm. I was a Christian, but I, I, I wasn't that much serious. I see. But, <laughs> but um, I see. Um, after some of these things, I mean, there are certain things you cannot even understand why somebody could sit down and plan some of these mm. things against you. And so, if you don't understand, you give it to God and get more closer to Him because He's been our source of protection. Mm. I am once for jump not because I'm smart. I know you've been following the political discourse. Um, I mean, you always do, but particularly at this time, with barely three months to the, the polls. Um, Campaigns have heated up. A lot of people have come up to suggest a lot of things. The NPP and NDC have both outdoored their manifestos. Um, there appears to be a lot of <laughs> a lot in there as to whether those things are uh, rather the things we want to see or hear is another thing, and whether or not even implementing them will be the easiest of tasks is another thing. Uh, for instance, um, these political figures talk of uh, free access to internet, uh, uh, free tertiary vocational education training, uh, part payment of uh, um, tertiary fees and everything, and uh, even some, to an extent, uh, an amendment sort of of the free SHS policy and all. Um, generally, what, what's your take on the two documents you have seen so far? I think the, strategically the NDC also delayed this. Um, and I'm sure they tweet, yeah, because um, <laughs> I, I know they were supposed to land DS on a certain date mm. and they changed it and all that. So when they did DS recently, you could see um, some amount of borrowings from what had taken place oh, but previously. That's, that's unfair. No, oh no, but but no, it's it's not it's not wrong. Mm. I mean, if you borrow and you borrow well, just to to to, to make to, you look good. To, well, not to, to, to also appeal, the... no, no, to appeal to the citizen. Mm. The two are all seeking to appeal to us and to be able to communicate well so that we understand things well. I think, I don't, I don't, it's not a big deal. Everybody, but, 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 listen, to, to, listen, to say, listen. To say they borrowed, you know, I mean, you can think of, of an idea now. I may think of a similar idea. Research has proven that that is possible. So you don't want me to say they borrowed. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> so, well, well, if they didn't borrow. I saw semblance of how okay. MPP did their lunch, you know, mm. with how the NDC did their lunch. Okay. And for me, it, it's not a big deal. Um, they all said all that they wanted to say. Mm -hmm. They showed, Mahama showed, uh, they showed Mahama's achievement when he was mm -hmm. in power and then the kinds of things that they want to do. So MPP promised a lot and NDC also promised a lot. Mm -hmm. Promised so many things. Uh, they, in fact, both parties have been totalitarian in their promises. What I mean by that is that they have promised to cover almost every aspect of human life. They, they promise a lot mm. and, and in their quest to um, fulfill the promises, they pussyfooted the implementation of what is ca encapsulated in their manifesto. What I mean by that is that, you see, they scratch the surface. Kwame Nkrumah constructed the motorway and you know that the motorway has been able to stand the test of time. Okay, but today, if a politician promises a road, it's a road that will be done in an election year. So sometimes, for instance, if there's going to be a by-election, mm -hmm. you have three days. And within three days, a road will be constructed and tarred and asphalted. You have street lights, you know, on the road so the just because of a by-election so that after six months, it deteriorates. Mm. And these are the kinds of things that sometimes politicians want to point, uh, point to. And I'm saying they sacrifice quality. And so my point is that why don't you focus on just four, four projects? Do them, implement them with your soul in it, in them. Okay, do them and do them very well. Get out of the scene. Or you do that within just four years. The next four years, identify other four and accomplish them very well. You get out of the scene. Let another regime come. Let them also single out just three, four signature projects. Okay, so there are so many projects that politicians did when they were in power. Those projects have collapsed and we cannot identify them those projects with the names of the politicians who introduced them because they've collapsed mm. but if they were if they had lasted 
okay then we would have been able to say that well you did this and still put your name or attach your name to those projects and all that. so my point is that let's just focus on three or four or five projects and then tackle them very well that is where we'll be, when we'll be developed we'll be able to develop otherwise we would always be constructing routes we all set targets um their resolutions you set these targets not necessarily because you can meet all within a set targets uh, must uh, be reasonably set mm -hmm. and i'm saying that politicians must learn mm -hmm. okay since 1992 we have known pick all the manifestos measure what was achieved in the manifestos vis-a-vis -vis what was said and we should have come to the conclusion and realization that look then we say too many things and in a manner that perpetuate the derogatory but sometimes deserving description of politicians as being liars mm. because you say so many things knowing very well that you can't do all the things and if that happens then it becomes difficult for those of us who teach the students that politics is not about the game of lies and deceit so my point is that okay. President Akufuado could focus, focus on his signature project, free SHS. But he's delivering like, on Hold it. on, I'm Is saying, he uh, hold on. He could focus on the free SHS, mm -hmm. do it and do it very well. It has teaching challenges. It has, it has, it, it, as, it's as, been, as every, it's as as every other correct. Problem, okay. So my point is, my point is, my point is not, it's not about taking the box mm -hmm. to say that I said I'll do it and I've done it. Okay. Focus on free SHS. Um, if it is doom so you want to banish, you focus on it. Mm -hmm. If it is real ways, you want to ensure that uh, our, you want to deal with all our road networks and also ensure that our railways are good, railway networks are good. You focus on this one, two, three, and tell Ghanaians that this is what I told you I'll be doing. I've delivered on it, and you can now see that people can attend secondary schools freely, and the quality too is. If you go to top notch, uh, if you go to sorry, um, South Africa. Yeah. Government schools are schools that provide quality education. Private schools are schools that people who fall out of the system attend. But if you come to our part of the world, it appears that private schools do better than government schools. So my point is that you can concentrate so much on what government is doing and make sure that you enhance the quality. All other things should be, you know, to be put on hold. Do these things, do them very well so that but at the end of the day, if you are exiting, we can properly attach your name to your signature projects and we'll know that they've been done very well. What is your own assessment of the implementation of the free SHS policy? Well, I mean, for starters, I will say that um, the government has done well by showing a clear indication that um, um, it, it, it was willing right from the word go to match um, policy prescriptions or policy interventions which was with, with manifesto, its manifesto content. Sometimes regimes come to power, they promise and the kinds of things that they do doesn't match mm -hmm. what was captured in their manifesto. Mm -hmm. But they've been true to their, uh, I have problems with, there are problems with the free SHS. I mean, I, for instance, believe that free SHS wasn't the way to go because I don't see why government, I'm a teacher, I earn a salary. I don't see why government should be able to pay the, the salary, you know, of of uh, the, the, the school the fees, fees of, 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 of my, 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 my children mm. or, and all that. So um, I was thinking that we could have done something to be able to identify the real needy people and then support them. The uh, opposition National Democratic Congress, they are seeking to recapture power from the NPP and they are offering a lot of things. Uh, if you've read their manifesto or at least portions of it uh, as regards education, um, I'm sure you'd, you'd come across a number of interesting things. Um, let's go to the university's bill, for instance, because I know <laughs> because you're a teacher at the university, it's something of uh, uh, immense importance to you. Um, they say they are going to cancel it, they will repeal it, and that they do not think there's the need for any university's bill uh, to regulate anything at the universities. Uh, I'm sure this must be good news for you and for your other colleagues here. Well, you remember, is it two years ago, I single handedly championed that course? I mean, of fighting yeah. against the um, public investors bill. Mm -hmm. It's come up again. Mm -hmm. um, there are discussions. Uh, it's not a political issue. Well, <laughs> it's not a political issue. Um, my colleagues uh, say they are for outright rejection and I belong to them and I associate myself with their, their position. And um, I know that uh, at the moment uh, there are discussions among 
um, those who initiated you know the, um, um, the bill mm -hmm. and um, um, there are discussions and I know also that um, the, during the launch of the NDC's manifesto um, Nano Pukwaji man said it categorically. Were you engaged? Was UTAG uh, engaged when these political parties were coming out with these things to target uh, this? I don't know. I'm not bill. a UTAG executive. And so I wouldn't be able to delve deeper into some of the issues that. Uh, but you are aware of but, some of these But I'm aware I'm that at least um, in Legon here, the position is that. Um, um, it will be rejected outrightly, and um, and elsewhere, uh, what's the position? I, or what's, I what's the national body saying? I don't. I don't. I'm that sure they're open to negotiations about no, but modifying I, the contract. I'm sure. I know that there were there were negotiations and there were discussions and with, with UTAG and all that. But some people also felt that um, the contents, the bill, does not appear to solve any. Um, There's no problem. Uh, why, why, so why create that's, a problem? That's what. That's, that's what. That's mm. what. Um, that's what. Um, that's another view. So for yourself and, uh, and for your colleagues now, you are faced with the choice of um, two political parties. One saying, "Listen, this is what we are doing. We are going to implement so and so. If you have challenges, yeah, we'll try and work around it. But this is it. It's going to happen." There's another saying, "No, <laughs> it, it shouldn't happen. There's no problem. So what mischief are you trying to cure?" which you appear to be subscribing to. Now, is that to suggest uh, the teachers may be more aligned towards the NDC this time around based on that single thing they have? I don't, I don't, I don't think policy? so. These are very independent-minded people. Um, it's about academic freedom and for us, um, <laughs> but one, even, one, even, one. <laughs> even though, even if um, salaries are not too good, I mean, um, they are not on demonstration because of salary. They are on demonstration because of academic freedom. The, the NPP in 2016, promised free SHS. It appeared to have worked for them because a the number of people kept saying, hey, may Babeco school free, I would have a child go to school for free and I wouldn't have to pay a dime. And uh, uh, quite a number of people uh, seem to have bought into that philosophy. Now the NDC is promising free technical vocational education training. And uh, even if you're going to the university, you know what, we'll pay half of your fees, just go. <laughs> for those of you who have other challenges uh, like accessing students loan and all, we will find a way to, to make things work for you. Um, Situating this into proper perspective, uh, I mean, how 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 big a role is this likely to play in the 2020 poll? Whether you like it or not, there are people who are excited about it. Mm. There are people who get excited about some of these things, and to the extent that it solves their problem, why not? They would they would definitely want to listen to it. But there are others too who may say that well, these are mere um um. They are mere rhetorics and all that. So definitely you have a section of the citizenry who will be excited and who will be swayed by some of these promises. But you also have a section of the citizenry who will say that, um, well, these are, um, these are merely promises, mere uh, uh, promises that are, are just being given and mm -hmm. all that. And so um, uh, my point really is that it's not about saying everything it's about saying few and making saying sure right things. Um, okay. making sure that you can do them now um uh, with a few months to the elections i mean previously some said it wasn't really much of a contest between john dramani mahama and anado danko um a few months ago uh, he did name a running mate and that appeared to have tipped the scale in a certain way and you could see and hear a lot of people, those playing the gender card, suggesting, well, there's a lady, there's a potential to have a first vice president who's a female. Um, some also playing the, the academic card to suggest that, well, this also appeals much more to the neutrals than even um, uh, someone you said was a governor or was a, a deputy governor or so. So um, from where you sit, I know, of course, <laughs> with that research, you may not really be able to um, uh, predict. But with the appointment of Jaina uh, Nopokwajman as the running mate, do you think um, the NDC uh, stands a better chance in this election? Well, I think um, whatever, uh, whoever made that choice of Nana Nopokwajman was a master politician. Okay. Um, in politics, you are very careful in determining who you select. Mm. Particularly, you look at who cannot be attacked so much and who doesn't have a lot of baggage. 
one of the things that President Alain Kufuado said in his campaign was that he was incorruptible mm -hmm. and that you cannot see that he has gone to spend or is going to embezzle any public money. And it was true. You understand? And so people could not point to him, to he as a person, mm -hmm. that he's done X, Y, Z. And um, President Mahama, and I'm sure his team of advisors may have looked at a whole lot of things, but the, the selection of Nana Upukwa Jiman is a master choice. Because you see, all of a sudden, uh, people wanted to attack her. But they realized, you see, they, they, they decided to set a trap for the opposition. If you talk too much, you'll be insulting womanhood. Mm. <laughs> and if you want to know what it means to do that, go and ask former CP peace flag bearer, George Opesika Agude. <laughs> go and ask mm. when he says that, he said that women are merely objects of comfort and asked what, he, what happened to him. And so my point is that, you see, by, so, by that point, he's an academic. Mm -hmm. And so you see, academics, we have our own ways of doing things, very refined. They cannot descend into the gutters of politics and all that. And if you are not careful, um, you attack her too much. And you have a section of the citizenry for the majority majority of the citizens, they are women. They are about 50, over 52% of our population. If you don't take care and infuriate them to form a constituency, I think you are gone. And so you see her selection has, um, has done a certain good to the Mahama um, ticket. Previously, before her selection, it was, it was, it was, um, it was something, I don't know how to put it, but you see, it's now, the chances are now moving to 50-50. Okay. But the NPP is saying that you're not voting for uh, Jane Anupokwajma, you are voting for <laughs> John Dramani Mahama. Well, that's, that's, that's something that can be said, but you have a section of the citizenry who pair the one who is your number two, mm would make them make their... I mean, when politicians are going for their campaign, mm -hmm. why is it that they go with certain people who are not contesting? You'll be there, they'll call you, please accompany us, mm. uh, follow us, and let's go and campaign. Yeah. The idea is that when the citizenry or when voters see that this particular person has joined in the campaign, it adds to your political capital and goodwill. Listening to you, I, I begin to now understand why a lot of people say, Prof understands the game. Professor Jampo understands the political game. You, you must play the game. So why are you not into politics? Me myself. Why, why don't you become an MP or something of the sort? Sir? Oh, there are so many reasons too. Uh, first of all, I teach, I teach political science. So there are a lot of uh, teachers political, who have well, politics. Well, let me, I'm, I'm speaking from my conviction. You see, mm. a political scientist is a referee who knows the game of politics. So when team A does wrong, he whistles. When team B, team B does wrong, he whistles. Okay, so by the calling I've chosen for myself, I believe that I should remain in the middle. And you see, it is actually good. See, our friends from the NDC, mm -hmm. our friends from the MPP. In, our, in Ghana, our politics is so divisive that if you go one side, you automatically would lose your friends from the other side. And all that. So, which one is good? Going to side A and losing side B, or going to side B and losing side A? I, I cherish the friends that I have in NDC and MPP. And then, number two, I don't know whether I have the temperament to be able to withstand um, the kinds of things that are, are said to politicians. You see, mm. if you want to hear proper insults. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even a politician, but sometimes the kinds of things that people say about me. Okay, mm. let me tell them. Um, it's only people who tell me, but when I say my mind, I don't read your comments. I don't read those negative comments. Whether they are positive or negative, I don't read them. I don't listen to news. I don't watch television. I don't read newspapers. 
I say things from my mind. Mm. Okay, I will not watch or listen to be told about something that would infuriate or get me angry and all that. I mean, it's gotten to that point where to maintain your sanity, you just have to remain focused on your work and to ignore distractions. So my point is, I, I'm not sure whether I have the temperament, whether mm. I can understand when people are no longer even insulting you, they are insulting your mother yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all that. And so maybe um, people have been asking this question, but mm. maybe when, when I, maybe, I don't know, when I stop teaching. Mm. But in the past few years, you've been doing a lot of donation to a lot of people in your constituency. Um, is that you prepping the way? <laughs> I don't that understand your exit strategy from, I don't, from teaching. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand why you people ask this question. <laughs> the point is this: uh -huh. I I come from Salt Pond, and my mother comes from Salt Pond, my father comes from Ekrapim Latte, and I go to Salt Pond more because my father had to flee Ghana, the shores of Ghana, in 1979. Mm when Rollins came to stage a coup that killed FWK Akufu. My father was, 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 with, was with Akufu, so okay. he would have been killed if he had stayed. So I never, I grew up before I got to know um, my dad. And so I was, anytime I said I was going to my hometown, my mm. mother took us to Salt Pond and all that. And my mother tells me that growing up, uh, she thought I was even a sickler or had a sickle cell. Because I was always sick. Okay. I was always sick. And Sorpon Hospital, where it is located, is located on a hill. And sometimes I'll be convulsing and then she'll carry me Not and we'll climb you know, yeah. that hill and all that. And so one day I went there, I saw the place, I thought it was not in good shape. And I remembered what my mommy told me, that mm -hmm. I was always rushed to the emergency, and the accident and emergency where I was always being rushed there when I was growing up. And I said that, so if that is the case, as a way of also giving back to the society, why don't we adopt that place and then ensure that if you have something small, okay. we go and give. See, adoption of a place does not necessarily mean that you have to spend money. Those people, I call in son and sons and daughters of um, Saltburn, that they should also go back to Saltburn and give back to the community. My adoption of um, the accident and emergency ward uh, uh, never meant that I always had to spend money there. Mm. Sometimes you go talking to people that have adopted this particular word. We need A, B, C. Can you assist me? Mm -hmm. And I've had so many in the various donations that I've done to the hospital. I'll tell you that some of the the majority of the items came from well wishes. Okay. I go talking to people. This okay. is a hospital. This is a place I've adopted. I want you to help me go to this. Somebody say I'll donate a wheelchair. Mm. Somebody say I'll give you um, this. I'll give you that. And then sometimes you also add the letter we have and then to top up to go donate. And so, so it is just about trying to help mm. where so I it's just a genuine up. it's born out of a genuine. A lot of people listen, I'm not a politician, I can't do partisan politics for now. Okay. For now. Yes. For now. For now, I can't do for example this. <laughs> Maybe when, 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 I, when I, I, like I said, when I stop, when I quit teaching, mm. when I quit teaching, um, I'll, I'll consider it. But for now, I cannot see myself mm. taking one side. And yeah, some, of, some of our students are actively partisan. Some of your colleagues yes. are also doing that. Well, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a choice. I respect them. It's yeah. a choice. But I feel that mm. I want to remain in the middle. In the middle. And At least for now. Let's, let's put that caveat well, in there. Well, for now, I'm saying when I stop teaching. <laughs> and I don't know when I'll stop teaching. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for your time today. It is a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Ranswa Jampo is a lecturer here at the University of Ghana. Legon. He has been our guest right here on 21 Minutes with KKB. He's also the head of Youth Bridge Research Institute. They've been doing a lot of uh, advocacy as far as uh, things relating to the youth are concerned. I'm sure in this very critical period when we are all uh, working towards the elections, um, some of these youth will come in very handy. <laughs> He's the one playing that role, leading that very organization and uh, putting all of that energy to very good use. Um, that has been it for this episode of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kobna Chenchenibuati. I'll see you soon again, hopefully, with another guest you're expecting.